What's up, disc golfers? Joe here for Joe's Disc Golf, and I've got a, ba- uh, a jam-packed segment uh, episode. Words are failing me, and I'm all of 15 seconds into this episode. Great start here. So many things to talk about that I can't even keep it straight. We got some Twitter drama with uh, none other than the mystical, magical, special edition Brody Smith himself, and some comments that were made by Ella Hansen. We've got an update to the mandatory rule. Uh, I'm going to talk about my article that I wrote about the holy shot, because holy shot, please stop. Oh, dear Lord. Oh, and that and and, oh, how could I forget about this? The first round of the Memorial Championship has happened. It was on the DGPT. It was also a Silver Series at one point. It was on the National Tour at another point. And right now it is just nothing but a plain old A tier. But before we get too far into it here, we've got to thank our sponsor for this episode. That's right, Log. What rolls downstairs alone or in pairs rolls over your neighbor's dog. What's great for a snack and it fits on your back? It's Log, Log, Log. Log from Blamo. It's big, it's heavy, it's wood. It's not a real product. Well, I mean, logs are real. But, so whole bunch of stuff to talk about i guess i guess just jump right into it title topic right here brody smith drama twitter ella hansen there's the cliff notes the ultra cliff note the cliff notes of the cliff notes the spark notes of the cliff notes if you will are spark notes still around i think cliff notes are still around those are those were hugely popular when i was in school tons and tons of um tests passed thanks to cliff notes and spark notes because Shoot, I didn't want to read half those books that they were making us read. And now I kind of wish I read some of them. We didn't have to read books like, you know, Fahrenheit 451 or 1984 or anything like that. It was Of Mice and Men. And yeah, that's about all I can remember. Lord of the Flies. Uh, Actually, wasn't too bad. I come from a strong camping background, you know, so that was actually kind of... Cool to see kids surviving in the woods. And it didn't go well. It did not go well at all. Spoiler alert. Uh, I did, well, I guess before we jump into it, did get a chance to get out and play some disc golf. It was like 50 degrees here, which in northeast Indiana, in the Midwest period, it hits like 50 degrees. You're like, shorts and t-shirt, let's go swimming, buddy. Let's get going. The The courses were actually in pretty good shape. Little muddy, little muddy, a lot of sap. A lot of sap, but uh, tons of fun. Got out to play with uh, one of the guys from Half in the Bag, RJ, who shot, he shot well. I shot really well, considering I can still count on one hand how many rounds I've played this year. Um, I have played more rounds than I've recorded. Normally, I record just about everything I do on Udisc, but the last time I went out to go play uh, PFW, the T-pads were all iced over. And there was maybe like a little square where you could put a foot for a standstill. And after hole one, I was like, not recording this round. This is not a round I want to remember because the conditions are terrible. Absolutely terrible. But this one, I went, uh, started out with, started out hot with two birdies. One was a throw in from like, I guess it was circle two. I walked it off to 60 feet, roughly, I think, give or take, you know. U-Disc could be anywhere from next to the basket to 150 feet away because the GPS is not always the best, but that's not necessarily a U-Disc issue, more so GPS and all that stuff. Um, but anyway, too, tons of fun. Barely missed the 25-footer, hit the nubs. I didn't have any of my putters with me. They're all um, at work where I store my basket and so i don't i didn't i forgot to bring my putters i didn't think it was going to be that nice of a day so i didn't have my putters i usually putt with classic soft judges i putted with the classic blend emac judge which is similar but it didn't have the right hand feel and things just weren't going right i wasn't about to use my lucid judges because that plastic just does not grab any chains it it slides through like nobody's business so that um 
that uh, yeah, that didn't that didn't go so well. But overall, my score, I shot five down, and I didn't park a hole, but I outdrove a hole that I rarely make it to the top of the hill. It is like 350, 360, up a pretty solid incline. Um, as Flyheiser on Instagram has said, uh, it is one of the most deceptive holes that he's ever played for distance. And he plays a ton. He is going to Am Worlds and I believe turning pro after Am Worlds. So I playfully call him the sandbagger of Fort Wayne. But no, he's a good guy. He's a really good guy. Um, it's just, even he said he like he's like that that hole plays well over four hundred. So I crushed it with a raider on my forehand in almost dead calm wind. So he can't say it was wind assisted. It was all me. It was one hundred percent Joe, one hundred and ten percent all Joe. Me, lunch bucket Joe, shoeless Joe, Joe Mama. That's me. Joe Mama. But um, yeah, got to play some disc golf, got to watch tons of disc golf. If you missed my Las Vegas Challenge wrap up and thoughts, you can catch that in two different places. One would be this podcast right here, Joe's Disc Golf. You know, go back one episode from the one you're listening to right this very second. And there it is. Or you could go to half, half in the bag, episode eight, The Last Vegas. Uh, still working off those Star Wars puns, trying that out. And uh, yeah, just trying trying to get that going. Um, you know, it'll be the last one will be the Rise of Skywalker parody of some kind. I don't know. The Rise of Discs. Hey, enunciation is key here. I'm just throwing my pens around like nobody's business. Uh, but so if you didn't catch Las Vegas challenge, go back and watch it. Like, holy crap, that was good. That was really, really, really good. But, uh, coming off of that, coming off of the Las Vegas challenge, we had a, uh, tweet put out on, uh, March 1st by Ella Hansen, bagel powered. Uh, and I'm just going to read this straight through. It's two tweets. And we'll go from there. This is a bit of the controversy here. It was, this weekend was a lot of fun, but it did remind me of how much I dislike being in the gallery exclusively because inebriated AMs love yelling their very uneducated opinions about what the pros are choosing to do. No, that backhand dominant player should not be throwing a forehand upshot just because you would do it. There's a reason they're on the pro tour and you and not you. That came off as kind of high and mighty looking down on the peasants uh, because partially poor word choice, partially Twitter, it's it's just written words. Um, and so that's how it goes. I mean, there's no, you couldn't tell if there's any irony, any sarcasm, any tone at all because words don't have tone. Unless you're on Reddit and you use the slash S for sarcasm, because dear Lord, at least Reddit has figured it out. Who knows? But um, here's the thing. Uh, As the sport grows, which is what everybody wants or says they want for disc golf, more people are going to be watching it. More people are going to be um, spectating it and be there and shouting their opinions regardless. Shouting out heckling just for fun. They might be telling James Conrad to throw a forehand because, (laughs) I mean, you know, up until I'd say last year, they'd be telling Sarah Hokum to throw a backhand. Her backhand is really solid, you know, or, you know, they'd probably be telling Kevin Jones not to jump putt, you know, outside circle one because Kevin Jones always jump putts everything or Nico or anybody. I mean, heckling Nico could be interesting. Same with Eric Oakley. He is, he wears his emotions on his sleeve. You might get some reactions out of him, but here's the thing. You, you as the collective are pros. You will have to deal with this. This is something relatively new to the sport, but it is something that happens. Now you're pretty solid FPO player and you were not specifically being heckled, but it happens. It happens in the PGA. It happens in 
NBA, NFL, MLB, NHL. You should hear the crap. I work high school sports. I've worked, I've worked AAU basketball. And you should hear the crap parents yell at the 10U, at the 8U kids. It's baffling that, you know, a grown-ass adult is going to yell some of that crap at an 8-year-old, at a 10-year-old. That is absolutely insane and ridiculous, and I hate AAU with a burning passion of a white, of 10,000 white hot suns, because AAU is just a money-grabbing cesspool. Sorry, I, I hate to tell you, but um, your kid is not the next LeBron, is not the next Michael Jordan, is not Scottie Pippen, is not anybody. You have topped out at 5'4". Your husband has topped out at 5'6". Yes, your kid can still keep growing. I highly doubt it. I'm sorry. Your kid is not the next Muggsy Bogues. Sorry. Can't even get two inches off the ground. It happens. Basketball, probably not his thing. Maybe baseball. Maybe some other sport that does not rely so much on height. Disc golf, for it. Uh, for instance, golf, you know, height does help, but at the same time, look at some of those guys, look at Paul Macbeth. He's not a super tall dude. Look at uh, Drew Gibson. He's not a super tall dude. I'm not saying height doesn't have its advantages, but good form and good timing is pretty much awesome. Um, so, uh, Brody was and got into a, a little bit of a debate because he screenshotted it because he He answered like he replied saying something along the lines of like, you know, hey, this is pro sports. Look at what happens. But. um, It just. uh, So that got him in trouble because he dared to screenshot it because somebody said, hey, it's deleted. And other people were trying to go like, what were you saying? What what was the context and everything? And then this one dude on a. um, on Twitter that I find horribly annoying, um, just went off on him. I'm trying to find the tweet thread here, just saying like, you know, how it's, you know, he's just beating up on this poor defenseless FPO player. And it was nothing of the sort. Like it just happens. You know, he even made the point that, Hey, this is what happens. And that was my point. I even wrote back, I paraphrased the I, I replied to the Ella Hansen tweet because it was tweeted out. It was retweeted by Ulti World. It probably would have flown right under the radar, um, except that Ulti World retweeted it and it got a lot of traction that way. Uh, I replied, and I'm paraphrasing here, but it's the Bud Light real men of genius, real men of genius, talking to you, Mister Pro Sports Heckler. They say. Those who can't play, coach. Well, those who can't coach sit 30 rows back, shouting obscenities and bad opinions. Real man of genius. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. They're drunk. They're saying stupid crap. That's what happens. I would have an issue with it if they're screaming and shouting this crap through the middle of someone's swing when you're supposed to be quiet through the middle of a putt when someone's trying to concentrate on that. Like, I get that. I get it. Like, that's that's highly inappropriate. That is not the right time to do that. But pro sports, you got to start blocking it out. You know, look at, as I said, look at any pro sport. You know, how many times have you heard people shouting when you're sitting in the stands, like, you know, pass the ball or tackle the guy, you know, pretty harmless crap, because I'm not going to repeat the stuff that I've heard at games, you know, or telling people to shoot it when they're at half court and there's still like three minutes at the game left, you know, just stupid crap like that. It, it happens. So I think the worst part was she kind of doubled down and then gave this weird apology type thing that didn't go over all that well. It was just kind of, it was kind of dumb from the outside looking in highly entertaining. That's, that's what I have to say about that. Um, I enjoyed thoroughly enjoyed reading it because there are a lot of stupid people getting mad about just absolutely stupid things. And it just like, I, I can't even believe it half the, well, I can because the internet and I just, I, I don't even know. 
I don't even know at this point. It just, uh, it, uh, yeah, I'm at a loss for words because I don't know, pretty terrible. But going from that to the wonderful, superb Memorial Disc Golf outing, uh, if you haven't seen yet, I do have the results up here right now. And this is after round one. This is just a plain old A tier. Nothing special here. Nothing crazy going on. Like I said, it used to be a Silver Series. I think at one point it was National Tour. I think at another point it was DGPT. I it, It's been a little bit of everything. A lot of people stop on their way to um, Waco because from Vegas, it's not really that far out of the way. You can make it on the way. And like a lot of the Europeans are there because, duh. I mean, why not? So on the MPO side, we have Chandler Fry sitting at an 11 under par, making lead card. Adam Hams. He's from Manaqua? Damn, I used to live just north of there. Um, when I lived there, he probably was not that. He probably he might have been started playing uh, disc golf, but that's a whole nother story. Uh, Adam Hams tied for second, uh, 12 under par. Anthony Barella, the other person tied for second from Mesa, Arizona. Close one there. And just if you had any doubts, if he was any good or not, that he would have slapped people around when he would have, if he would have joined everybody at the Las Vegas Challenge, Mr. Paul Macbeth is shooting a 16 down. He he got two birdies. That's it. Hole seven, par three, shot a three. Hole 18, and that's 210 feet. I don't know if he went OB. This is just the um, uh, PDGA live scoring summary stuff, and it sucks. It's pretty terrible. I have no idea where any of his shots landed. I have no idea if he went OB. I have no idea at all. Uh, and same thing with hole 18. 400 feet, par three, absolutely insane. Um, as of right now, that round is rated, <laughs> that round is rated at an 1108. That's insane. He's shooting 58 points better than his current rating as 1050. So that is really exciting there. On the women's side, we have Jennifer Allen shooting a four down making the lead card. Maria Oliva uh, coming off a pretty solid performance. Both of those women had solid performance at Las Vegas Challenge. And uh, Maria Oliva is sitting at five down, solo third place. And we have a tie for first place with the Kristen Tatar, or as the guys at Foundation say, Kristen Tater. Tater no, it was, it was Taterd. Uh, a bit of a, a typo or a misspeak there. They're trying to say, Tatar in third and just kind of whoop, pushed it all together into one word. And Evelina Solonen sitting at seven down. Both of these ladies, lovely ladies, are sitting at seven under par. It's absolutely insane. Um, their rounds were uh, pretty solid overall. I mean, again, it's hard to tell because the PDGA live scoring sucks. Have I made that clear yet? PDGA live scoring sucks. It's, I mean, it's fine to use for like on, on the player side and on the uh, TD side, it's great because it auto calculates everything. It auto populates everything. You know, as long as you put the scores in right, it all adds it up and there's no mistakes there, which I love. I hate, hate, hate. And it, it caused me so much anxiety to have to add up a manual scorecard because I was just absolutely terrified that I would screw something up. And I don't know. I The worst thing I would want to do is get a stroke because I can't count when that Catholic education. I, I just that's the last thing I'd want to do is screw up or screw up somebody else's. And, you know, with the advent of UDISC, most people keep their backup on UDISC. I keep a separate backup of everybody like up off of the side of that because I also like to keep my own stats so I can go back and go. All right, yes, I bogeyed hole six, but I also went OB twice or something like that. I don't know. Just just so I know. It's not just I got a four on a par three. I did this. I two putted. I three putted. I eight putted. Wouldn't be the first time. 
maybe in a tournament. I haven't eight putted, but I have like I have had issues there. But um, yeah, huh. it just I don't I don't even know. I don't even know. <sighs> but that is that is that. So uh, moving on to the live coverage, which the Disc Golf Pro Tour, I thought did a good job. Uh, that is one thing I will say. They were there was always something going on, and the live scoring or the live feed was awesome because you could go from watching lead card tee off to, Hey, this guy's playing hot. We're going to show one or two shots are there. Go back to the lead card with their up shots. We're going to bounce over here. We're going to bounce over there. We're going to go all around and see so many things that you could not see from post produce. Um, one thing that I saw too much of, and it was pretty annoying was the Holy shot. James Conrad's throw in at worlds. And it seemed like everybody was using that as their commercial. And I just, I, it, it's lost all meeting. It has. Um, if you've watched the Las Vegas challenge, I was only able to catch the FPO side of it. And I got sick of seeing the Holy shot. It's an awesome shot. It is a great, it is going to go down as one of those things in disc golf history for a very, very long time just like Michael Jordan's three-pointer to beat the Cavs in 89, where he's jumping in the air, fist pumping, and it's exciting. Tiger Woods winning the Masters in 2005, and he does his little fist pump thing. James Conrad running down, fist pumping as he's doing that. That's great. Here's the thing. Like, technically, I was alive when Michael Jordan made that shot, but I was like six months old, maybe. So I don't really remember it. Tiger Woods, I vaguely remember it. I don't really watch golf. So eh. the thing is, like, as somebody said, like the shot, like seeing it gave them chills. And I will say yes. But by the time I saw it for the 14th, 15th, 16th time, and you see the whole thing, it's not just a quick like a quick little. All right, there's James Conrad as he's releasing. And then you hear chains and it's in. It's the whole deal. It's the, it's like 30 seconds long and it is just, I can't, I can't do it anymore. It's lost its meaning. It's lost its specialness. In my opinion, I just, we need to find something else. Like I get it. Disc golf pro tour slash disc golf network. They want to show it because it is an incredible moment, incredible moment in pro tour history in the world's history. PDGA wants to use it because it's a, it happened in a major MVP wants to use it because they went from selling a decent amount of discs to selling a crap load of discs because of this shot. James Conrad doesn't mind that it's on there because, you know, he's on it. The problem is I'm just sick of it. Like I've seen it way, 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 way too much. Now, every now and then in basketball or on general sports clips where they're showing celebrations, they'll show it, but they'll just show Michael jumping in the air and fist pumping. They'll just show Tiger fist pumping, you know, maybe something like that. Just cut out part of that where James Conrad's running down the fairway, just going to throw it in. It's just, I can't anymore. I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to, you can't make me. It just, it's not that good. Maybe this is a, a little bit of that, you know, old man yells a cloud type moment from the Simpsons. I don't know. Maybe I'm turning into one of those old fuddy duddies and I just can't, can't do it anymore. But I just, uh, I don't even know. I don't even know. Quick little moment here to say, hey, if you aren't subscribed, you should go ahead and subscribe. If you're watching this on YouTube, click that little red button down below that says subscribe. If it's not red, you're already subscribed. Good job. You get a gold sticker. Woo. We are closing in on 600 subscribers. Once we do that, we will do a giveaway of a piece of Joe's disc golf merch. It will be a t-shirt. So, but we have to hit 600 subscribers. So if you aren't subscribed, get over to YouTube, youtube.com slash Joe's disc golf and get subscribed. And then I'll let you know what it is. Trust me, I like doing giveaways on weird numbers. So the next one won't be a thousand. There'll be something else. But get subscribed or else. 
For the love of God and all that's holy, shot, stop. That's always fun. You can always follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I have my opinions there. Uh, I write articles. Try to get out a handful a week. Uh, trying to do write-ups after the rounds. I can't do it after the memorial because the best I got right now is just the PDGA live scoring. And it'd be Paul Macbeth shot a 16 down. Good job, buddy. Kristen Tatar and Evelina Solonen shot seven down. Good job, ladies. That's it. And that that's a tweet at best. You know, uh, because there's no live, I can't do it. But uh, if you head to joesdiscgolf.com, you can check out the directory of all the disc golf news, opinions. We have the player contract um, tracker. That page is still up there. Reviews for baskets, buying guides, disc reviews, working on that podcast, the About Us, and the all-important merch where you can shop for different things. We have polo shirts, t-shirts, visors, hats, mugs, blankets, sweatshirts, hoodies. I think that's about it. Uh, looking at doing socks, but I can't find any that I like. If I don't like it, nah, not going to do it. It's only stuff that I like, stuff that I'd wear, stuff that is comfy. Now, speaking of comfy, this is not a really good segue, but the PDGA has updated their mandatory mand- mandatory root rule. Effective March 2nd, 2022. That will be two days ago by the time that this podcast has launched. This is specifically rule 804.01 mandatory routes. There is a link in the article. So if you go to joesdiscgolf.com, if you're listening to this, it should be one of the top five articles right there. So uh, they updated two parts. They left parts A and B alone. They changed part C. Now, what the rule used to say was if a throw clearly and completely enters into a restricted space, the player receives one penalty throw, and then there's another two sentences after that, but they didn't change any of that. What it now says, if part of a disc, part of a thrown disc clearly enters a restricted space, the player receives one penalty throw. So it doesn't matter. So it basically eliminated some of that, like, Imagine that the you have your mando, you have a pole sitting right in front of you. To your right, that's all the restricted route. You have to go left. It's a mando to the left. So your disc comes in and it goes and you hit the pole and it drops straight down and a little sliver of the rim is sitting past the mandatory marker. You've just missed the mando and you take a penalty throw and either go to the drop zone or wherever your last throw was, probably a re-tee, because generally speaking, mandatories are usually closer to the tee, although not always. So you think of it, I like to think of it as a straight line, and now you have to, this is where tournament directors are going to have to get in and get a little creative as to say how, you know, where that line is, because that line could come off at any different angle off that pole. So you could have it going at like, if you're looking at the pole, noon is straight ahead, it could be going at a two o'clock angle. And if it's doing that, and your disc lands right next to it, you're fine. If it comes off at say three o'clock, eh, your disc is now out of bounds. If it comes out at like a four o'clock position, it's very clearly out and it would be really weird. But that's where TDs really need to make sure that they clearly define, you know, is it perpendicular? Is it, what is it? And then again, if you're unsure, take a provisional. So throw another shot as if you, and then play both out, just however it goes. So I like to think of it again as an OB line, but OB lines, remember here that if any part of the disc is still touching the OB line, has any bit of grass under it, because generally it's like by a sidewalk or something, then you're still in bounds. Now, if the disc is sitting half on the OB line, half in bounds, you're fine. If it's sitting half on the mandatory line, the restricted space, you're not fine. Not at all. Any sliver and you're gone. They added a whole nother part of this. This is mandatory route 804.01 part D. If a thrown disc 
is released on the other side of a restricted space compared to the rear edge of the marker disc, the player has missed the mandatory. The next lie and penalty are the same as 804.01.C. To put this very simply, you can have your disc down and it could be millimeters from being in that restricted space, but that still means that your reach back depending on how you have to throw, your reach back might go into that restricted space. As long as you are holding onto that disc when you reach back, you're fine. When you let it go, if you are in, if your hand, if your disc is in the restricted space, you are out of bounds. You've missed the mando. If you reach back into the restricted space and go through, pull through, let go, and you let go in the safe space, then you're fine. No big deal. I mean, I, this is pretty quick for the PDGA to update this rule and add a whole nother part that this rule has was changed as of January 1st, 2022. It is now March 3rd, 2022. So in three months, there have been some pretty strange cases that have happened with all the tournaments out there between C tiers, B tiers, and A tiers. There's been one Pro Tour event, and I don't think that they've had issues. I don't know. None of them, if there were issues, I'll put it this way. If there were issues, they weren't on the lead card or one of the cards where it made, you know, where it made news, essentially. It could have happened with the 7 a.m. tee off or the bottom card on the FPO or MPO or whatever at Las Vegas Challenge, and we would have never heard about it. It could have happened on the AM side. There's a fair bit of um, Mandos out there, so... You never know. It's things could have happened. It, it, speaking of Mandos, I played one tournament, which I did not like. It was on a course that has a, a honey bear. One of the oldest courses in the country. I don't like it. Um, the baskets are terrible. Uh, by the old rules, I got a disc stuck resting on the edge on the nubs. And that does not count. New rules, it does, I think. It's support well, it's not supported by the tray of the chains. So those hanging ones don't count. Any which who. Um yeah, uh the course was super short, and this is when I was playing AM2, so AM2 and lower did not have to play in the mandatories. And dear lord, that course was so easy without having to worry about the mandos. Um I actually would have rather played the Mandos because I thought it was too, too easy. Now, I'm not saying I would have won. I did not come anywhere close to winning. However, it just, it felt too easy. It was one of those courses where you're like this, like, I don't know. To me, it was just, it wasn't that fun. Honey Bear can be a fun course. It has got a lot of history. I just, meh, you know, if you're driving through, you know, you got to pay five bucks, I think. It's on private property. It's in a campground area. You got to pay five bucks. Their pro shop was well stocked. I can't vouch for that right now because I don't pro pro shops in general are starting to get more well stocked, but I can't necessarily speak for everybody because who the hell knows? Um, But yeah, that's, that's that. That's pretty crazy right there. Um, As a side note, uh, the PDGA has banned all Russian disc golfers from playing in and hosting tournaments. Um, I, I don't even know. And Belarusian players. I, I, I like, I kind of get it, but at the same time, like how many Russian and Belarusian disc golfers are there? I, I guess I get it, but you know, whatever. I wish, like, I hope things end soon with um, minimal loss of life. It's not a great situation there that's going on right now. Um, on a happier note, you could watch, um, oh, who is it? Stuff Made Here, which was hilarious. Uh, the guy made an automatic disc launcher. The problem was, the disc didn't spin. So it came out at like came out faster than Simon Lazat's 
record speed of 89 and a half miles an hour. I forget what it topped out at, but it was much faster than that. Uh, I think at one point he got it to 115, but it came out early. So, and things broke, but it was actually really cool. So if you go to stuff made here on YouTube, probably youtube.com slash stuff made here, you can watch it, but it was all about him building it more so than throwing it. Uh, one thing that I thought was really cool. He was using for half of it, uh, fusion felon. And I liked it. I, cause I like the felon. So that's kind of that shorter episode, not as much happening. You know, we're still topping out at about 35 minutes. This is kind of like where I like to, to hit it. I don't like to add fluff. I don't like to add things that we don't need to talk about, you know, if that makes sense. So thank you all for watching. Thank you all for uh, subscribing and listening and all this fun stuff, because without you guys, uh, I'd be old man talking to cloud, even though I'm not really old, but it's just, it's been fun. I really appreciate all you guys talking, having some fun out there. We've got a few changes coming up here in the works, not at liberty to discuss that at this moment, but you shall find out soon enough, young Padawans. But thank you all for watching. I appreciate all you guys. Go out, play some disc golf if the weather's nice. Uh, I can't wait to see you all soon. Talk to you all soon. And if you're in the Fort Wayne area, hit me up on Twitter, on Instagram, and maybe we'll go out and play around. Tillman Park is a ton of fun. If you are of a moderate, I would say if you play intermediate or better, you, you should be fine there. If you play less than... If you're at the bottom half of intermediate, you won't be fine there. We can play a different course. We can play PFW. We can play uh, Shof for Sweeney. Whatever. It depends on the day. depends on the weather. depends how windy it is. Shof is, a, is always windy. There's like a constant 10 mile an hour breeze at minimum. So, again, you know, if you're passing through, hit me up. If not, no worries. Everybody have a great day. I've been Joe. You've been awesome. And I can't wait to see you all in the next video. In the next podcast can't wait to talk to you if you get a beneficial tree kick don't forget to thank trees and if you get kicked deeper into the woods then well you must reflect and repent because you have transgressed against trees and that shall not do you must reflect and repent thank you all for watching have a great day